Howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Year's Podcast, produced by Terrier TV. I am a fellow they call Alligator Rob. It's a confusing story. It's not really that confusing. Anyhow, uh, before we get started, we want to say uh, thank you to Edna Wilson with Celebrate Remax Aerospace for your sponsorship of our program and everything you do for the local community here on the Space Coast. If you want to learn more about Edna Wilson and Celebrate Remax Aerospace, you can go over to ednawilson.com and she can help you with your home buying or selling needs. Whatever those might be, she can make the magic happen. All right, so how's it going, guys? What's new and exciting? Other than ladybugs apparently bleeding all over people. <laughs> yes, we've... we've <laughs> I'm glad, our, I'm glad we cracked that story research out. Staff. Yes, I had to fact check our last... Has, has looked into the ladybug phenomenon and she has something to report so yeah am i a liar am i not a liar because i don't like to, i don't think i'm a liar i am terribly sad to report that ladybugs <laughs> do in fact bite you're terribly <laughs> sad to say that frank told you the truth well but their bites <laughs> I always, yeah i always hate when you're right I the hate bites that. are mild so you must be what you must be allergic hey listen to this okay i got so, a 30 second degree from Google yeah we went from ladybugs. there's it's impossible for a ladybug to bite you to uh, ladybugs bleed on you, to yes, ladybugs do bite you, to, well, if, that's, if it's actually possible that ladybug bit you, you must be allergic to it because it left a mark. Correct. So I'm just yep. telling you that, that, that evolution of the whole ladybug situation went in directions that uh, I don't think anybody expected. I have no. done 45 no. seconds worth of research now, so I consider right. myself an expert. So that's, a solid, that's a solid amount of research. <laughs> yeah. In I the did. grand scheme of things, she spent some time on it. <laughs> Yeah, I did not think that ladybugs bit. I've never no, been bit I, by a ladybug. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, no. Well, I'm. Uh, I guess they don't see us as but a I'm threat. Not, yeah, that's it. And I'm not tormenting <laughs> ladybugs. Right. You know, I'm not what out is that, there. Exactly? Are you yeah. out there doing? Yeah. What are Listen, you doing? I am part of an elite group of people. Okay. Elite, <laughs> okay. special, <laughs> I, high I like end group of people. There. Yeah. <laughs> high just, end group of people <laughs> that maybe have been bit by ladybugs. <laughs> okay, if you say so. I mean, I Google, Google backed me up. Okay. And then have had an adverse reaction. I didn't have an adverse reaction. Just the stuff. You said it that it freaking swelled hurt. up like a wasp. Yeah, I felt like somebody smacked me with a, uh, I don't know, a BB or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I said, dag nabbit. Like, it, it, hurts, it hurts worse than the big. It's like, if okay, so, imagine you were going somewhere on a, on a motorcycle. Like a, you know, like a mo- motorcycle. Did, and okay. did you say murder that's a, cycle? That's what <laughs> our, I thought he did. That's okay. been our family's joke forever. We always called uh, okay. motorcycles murder cycles because people die on them a lot. Yeah, they're horrible. Okay. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, imagine you're going really fast, like on a on a motorcycle, and you don't have any type of screen on your face. And let's say you're doing like 100 miles an hour, and one hits you in the forehead. It's that kind of situation when one bites you. Okay, what I want you to do is next time you go to a medical facility and they ask you if you have any allergies, list ladybug bites. That, Make sure that you do that because otherwise what type you of might vet, have some kind of problem. Cindy, you got to get him an emergency alert between, bracelet. <laughs> yes, get him a medical alert bracelet, yes. Between this episode and next episode, I'm going to need Cindy to really dig into it and find out what type of toxin the ladybug carries. That way I can wear that specifically around yes. my neck. yes. Because people will go, you're allergic to what, 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 what? <laughs> what? We're, like we're going to put that and we're going to put Big Bird. <laughs> yes, that and Big Bird. There we I go. used to have issues with Big Bird as a kid. <laughs> I, I think that's you a, still have issues with bird, Big Bird. Man. No, think about it. It's a big yellow bird with orange legs. Just think about him like down a dark alley or something where you're not expecting him. Like, I want to scrap a Big Bird. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. Big Bird needs to be on a, on a, on a wall in my house, you know, in my room when I was a kid. And uh-huh. this, I mean, you had to go to bed with Big Bird staring at you. And there was Bert and Ernie, which is a whole different story. Those that weird connection. <laughs> Don't I mean, even be honest. Seeing any of them would be scary. Yeah. Yeah. And I did yes. see them as, a, as a kid. The I count, saw them. The count comes out the trash can. And you'd be like, ah. That's solid. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That I, I never really thought about it in depth. Okay. And All now right. you have. Yeah. So actually, no, so he didn't come out of the trash. No, can. that was Oscar. Oscar. Yeah, it was Oscar. Oscar. I get it. And That's Oscar, okay. I was Oscar was slide. Yeah. Oscar was kind of sort of strange in his own right. Yeah. I kind of get it though. Yeah, I mean, he I wasn't he wasn't as bad as Big Bird. Bert and Ernie, if you really look at uh <laughs> if you really look at Bert and the scowl he always has on his face, <laughs> that's an angry dude, man. Oh, Ernie yeah, was tra- Ernie was always hiding Bert's anger. <laughs> yes. Cuz let's think, I mean, think about it. Did you ever look at his eyebrows? Bro was upset. 
It's the way he was sewn. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, he had two pieces of a head. <laughs> yeah, you can't <laughs> smile with two pieces of a head. So is it just yeah. Sesame Street you have it out for? Is it yeah, all like childhood memories? Like he's, yeah, two he's pieces put a lot of, of thought into yeah. He had two totally. separate pieces of head with one hinge. You can't smile yeah, like that. You can't exactly smile. Like that. I don't think tell me where teeth. you stand on Sylvester and Tweety. Can, that is can the we best, unpack that? That is literally the best explanation of, of, of a Muppet I've ever heard in my life. He's got two heads that are sewn together. Yeah, and none of them can smile with that. You couldn't smile with that if you had a hinge and two pieces I got a, it's like a clap I can't, I can't myself. Yeah, there, you go, there you go all right uh, all right okay <laughs> i'm better now i've got the oh man uh, that's i this is the first time i think i've lost it in a long time on a podcast yeah i didn't even say, mention big birds welcome i mentioned big you birds did, you did i did mention big, big birds, birds but i didn't yes. go like this as i said big birds so that's true <laughs> anyhow um that's a whole different discussion rick we can't really get into that right now that's above our pay grade currently We'll stick, we'll get there away from, go. okay, we'll get into it. Okay. You guys ready to check with our guest today? We're ready. We're <laughs> yeah. waiting on you. <laughs> okay. Oh Lord. Okay. So today on the podcast, we are joined by Rick Walter. Uh, Rick runs an organization called underdog devs and, uh, man, I think we've been friends since like what first grade. Yeah. I was young. We were young. I don't remember what grade. It, yeah, it was Atlantis, I think. Isn't that what it was? Off did, we start, yeah, did we start at Atlantis or did we start at <clears throat> Challenger 7? I know I was at Challenger 7 for a couple of years. Yeah, I wasn't. No. I, so it would have been third grade. Yeah, then. third or fourth grade. Yeah. Because I came from Cocoa. I was living off, or oh, whatever that road is out there, uh, the, down there in Sunrise Village. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, Canaveral Grove's Boulevard. No, it's not Canaveral. It's Clear Lake. Clear Lake. Okay, there's two different ones. There's one now on, that's the newer neighborhood. That's there on uh, Canaveral Grove's Boulevard. All right. So yeah, tell us a little bit about you, buddy. Yeah. Um, software developer. Um, I work for a company that, not surprisingly, makes software. Okay. <laughs> Would not have pieced that together. Right. Um, in my spare time, I work on Underdog Devs. Underdog Devs is basically a, under, uh, an organization that helps formerly incarcerated people and underrepresented people become software engineers. Like, uh, basically gets people from zero to like hireable. Yeah. Um, oh, we, so you really go from zero? Yeah, we take people so, that have never coded before. That is amazing. And help them. Yeah, okay. you might be cleaning pools one day and building software the next day. Oh wow! Okay. I mean, not the next day. Now that would be a, that would be a heck of a <laughs> <Right>. transformation <laughs> overnight. Yeah. It's, it's right. really it's a twenty four hour operation. How long is the process normally so, I mean, for a normal person? I'm sure it's different for everybody. So for me, it took three years. So that's not a normal person. That's a person that's a caveman. Like I was <laughs> I was I was borderline cave, caveman. Um, but for, I mean, like I hadn't even held a smartphone when I started. Okay. So, you know, you're talking, never been on Facebook, never been on the internet to whatever, to hireable at three years, maybe even hireable a little bit before that, but three years. Um, yeah, it wasn't quick, right? Like I don't have a quick uh -huh. fix, okay. but, but I've seen many people do it within a year. That's for amazing. sure. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I, we were talking about this a little bit before the podcast. I think your story is kind of a. A story of God's grace. I mean, I, tr I truly believe that because um, you've been through quite a bit uh, to be here where you're at now. Um, you know, you've had quite the quite the uh, incredible journey. And can you tell us a little? Like, can we hit that real quick for a quick second, yeah. and then we'll uh, we'll jump into the the rest of the story. Yeah, yeah. Like, so what? The adversity, the struggles. Yes. yes. Well, um, you said that you'd never held a smartphone. So oh, yeah, yeah. Why so, did you never hold a smartphone? <laughs> right. that, is, that does just leaving that in the air is like, like <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's true. So I went to prison when I was a teenager, when I was in high school. Um, growing up, I was, had like a tumultuous childhood, teenage years. Um, I had like the propensity for violence, getting in fights. I wasn't aggressive myself, but I responded poorly to aggression. You know, I couldn't walk away, that kind of thing. And so ended up in a lot of trouble you know, juvie county jail and then prison. And, um, yeah. So I went to prison and had no skills, went out of high school. So I was a kid, I was really young. And, um, before I got out, I started learning. I basically read about it and, um, started learning software development there at that point. Um, so at that point I hadn't, you know, when I went in, I was young. And so, right. oh, yeah. you know, I did some years and when I'm getting out, I had no, uh, in there, you don't have access yeah. to like the internet. You don't have access. Now there's a few things that have changed since then, but right. You know, when, when I was there, 
Um, it was like old school, you know, I might be in a cabbage field one day, right? Like yep. picking cabbage, yeah. right? Like I'm not going to be a professional cabbage picker. Right. Like that's not what I want for my you're, life. You're literally not being given an opportunity to develop yeah. skills that you yeah, can yeah, for use sure. on the outside. And you know, it doesn't help a lot of us go in there. We're like little savages. We're young. I was an idiot. I made terrible choices growing up. Um, you know, and Frank can attest to that. Like I knew Frank for a long time. So, you know, I mean, I wasn't a terrible person, but I did make bad choices. I seemed to always make impulsive, mm -hmm. bad decisions in the heat of the moment. And, um, had to, you know, had to do a lot of soul searching and I did that in prison, you know, read a lot, educated myself a lot. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I did come to the point where I was like, Hey, I'm not the good guy. You know what I mean? And all these incidents, like uh, maybe there's more to it than just, Hey, um, you know, I, cause you, you try to diminish it. You know, you try to look for right. reasons and you're like, oh, well, this guy did this or this person did that. And at some point you're like, well, other people aren't doing this. Yeah. <laughs> other people aren't <laughs> responding the same way. Yeah. So I was like, let me do some soul. You know, I did a lot of soul searching and realized like I got to I got to make better choices in life. And, you know, from there started trying to make better choices. So at what point, uh, how long before you got out was it you started looking into software development and what made you look there? Uh, a few years, maybe it was three years before um i was just realized i had no skills and um was looking at like things that are in demand and of the things they had like truck driving i didn't have a truck in there um yeah <laughs> right? yeah. Um, yeah yeah you know like there was a couple of things but uh data science software engineering well software engineering's the, like the salaries range usually from like 60 70 to like 130 and I was like, not bad, that's not bad. But you know, at the time I was thinking it's for wizards, right? Like you don't think it's like for normal people, you think it's for somebody that's much smarter than oh, myself, yeah. Yeah. but it's not, it's really anything. And I, this is what really what helped me was realizing that anything, you can do anything, it's just a matter of how much time you put into the thing. And so I was like, all right, let me start reading about it. And I got interested in it. And my wife helped me, she sent me a lot of stuff, Amanda, who y all, you all know and have interviewed. Amanda, without her, I probably, most likely hundred percent wouldn't have been able to do it, but she was there and she supported me and she helped me get material. Um, and to be honest, we, I had Python and some YouTube videos snuck in on a thumb drive. <laughs> oh, okay. Listen, so, of yeah. all the things to sneak in, I think I'm okay with yeah. that. Like that's yeah. yeah. And so we put it on some computer computers that weren't being used in a drug treatment center at the prison I was at. And, um, I started learning. And then as I learned, I'm kind of a people person, you know me, I like people. So I'm yeah. like, Hey, why don't y'all learn? And like, this thing's great. Like how much money you can make. And so I started teaching it in there before I ever got out off this stuff that basically okay. Amanda made happen. And, um, yeah. So started teaching it from that point. So how early on to, you know, you're starting to read about this and study it. Did you go hundred percent? That's my jam. That's what, that's what I want to do next. That's, this is going to be my next thing I'm going to do. Was this it immediate? It was like two days. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I, I don't know. Like, I'm very, like I said, I'm a little impulsive. So, like, I was like. <laughs> your oh, mind was it. made up. Yeah, your but mind yeah, was made up. Yeah, and I recognized pretty quickly, though, it's not something you could. It's one of those fields that's pretty deep. So, you can dabble and feel like you know something and you know nothing. And, but the good thing about that is it hooks you. So, then you're pulled in without realizing, like, how much you don't know yet. And right. so, you know, two, three years later, you're like good God, I'm still learning. Well, I didn't know I had no, I, if I had known this, I might not have continued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I might've gave up. Yeah. If but, you knew how deep the hole was. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cause it makes you feel, you can get a little touch of it. Oh, I wrote a script that does this thing on this computer and you know, and you're like, Oh, I'm a software dev now. And you got your, you know, I was, so the way I would do it is I would sit in this computer and I would have headphones on and we got music sent in too, of course, cause if you're going to have YouTube stuff snuck in, you might as well get music snuck in. So, so we had music on these computers and we had, um, these YouTube videos that Amanda helped us get. And, uh, I would just zone out for hours and hours and hours. And, um, it was like an escape kind of, yeah. and, yeah. uh, yeah, it was super fun. Made me feel, I didn't know anything at the time. I thought I did. And I started teaching it to everybody else and, um, it kind of took off from there. So, okay. You, you went through that section, you know, you, you learned about it. You taught, you taught it while you were in, you get out. Now, what's the next step? How do you get a job doing? How do you end up getting a job doing that? Well, I realized I didn't know enough when I got out. Um, so, so I, I got out, realized I don't know enough. Wanted to try to go to school. I have a felony. You know, I, I don't just yeah. have one felony. I've actually had a, a record uh, even before the last charge that I got. So, I, you know, I have I have this like, you know, scarlet letter hanging over me that I'm gonna have to explain to people. 
and convince someone like, hey, I'm right. okay. You I'm know, worth like, taking a chance. Yeah, I'm not a threat. I'm not a risk. I'm not whatever. And um, so I realized I'm not hireable yet. No, you're, right. not, you're not the sum of past actions. You know, yeah, you, definitely. Yeah, Nobody exactly. wants to be known yeah, for but, their, their but worst. But trying to explain that to an employer. Oh, yeah. it's not going to work. That's yeah. a yeah. big hill to climb. Exactly. Yeah. It's not going to work. So I wasn't hireable. So what I started doing is I just found like odds and end jobs. I worked with my friend, you know, Chris Segura. I uh, worked yep. with Chris for a long time doing some like or part-time stuff in Orlando, um, doing like sound setup things. Um, Coquina Seawall stuff like I did growing up, which I couldn't stand, but I had to do to get by. Um, and then I took as many loans as I could for to get – to go to EFSC and just that way I could at least be getting barely getting by and coding at the same time. And now Amanda had just graduated. She was actually studying for the bar exam at the time. So we were like super broke and stressed (laughs) and trying to get by. And um, so, yeah, it was rough. It definitely was rough. And I was having to learn everything because I had never done a lot of stuff. I didn't know how to sign a bill at a restaurant like I say I was, it had to be a yeah. little bit culture shock too oh and i was yeah. embarrassed right like how, as a grown oh, yeah. A, yeah you know i'm a grown adult how do i explain i don't know how to do that like and so you like it, you know it's just constant embarrassment for not knowing things that typical people know and mm-hmm. people having no idea why you don't know how to do right. that thing it's just weird you know yeah. did you um, spend a lot of time like in an environment just kind of watching to see what other people are in. doing and- yeah definitely you and- watch a lot I didn't like ordering for a long time. Amanda ordered for me for like the first six months. Like I wouldn't even order food. I just, cause there's so many options and you got, yeah. Yeah. and they'd yeah. ask you questions and they're like, do you want to, you and, know, how do you want that For so cooked? many years, you didn't have choices. I Nobody asked no you choices. what you want. Like right. your day was planned for you. Right. They, you know, they're asking things like, well, you know, how do you want it cooked? I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, well, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> all and, the way. I'd like right. it cooked all the <laughs> yeah, way. Thank like, you. I want it in the oven. Just like yeah. everyone else's food. <laughs> everyone else, yeah. I, right? I don't know. How do you, like what? Right? What tools do you right? have? I don't know. With their food, the right. same way, right? Yeah. Is there any other way you're cooking it? Is there something um, weird about me? Why are you asking me that? Yeah, so it was a lot of learning, a whole lot of learning um, to do. So there was all, you know, that on top of everything else. Yeah. So what, when you got out and you, you know, what was your first break into, into, the, into the field? Um, so I, after a certain amount of time, um, I went to a coding boot camp for a little while, a short period of time. I, was, I, I got my AS in software development programming from EFSC and it doesn't really have you hireable as not hireable in one sense. Um, like if you're interviewing at a tech company, they have a pretty rigorous interview process. You have to show serious skill. Now if you're hiring at like Raytheon or like no offense to everyone that works there, but I mean, I've tutored people that work out there. Like yeah. they can't program. <laughs> so yeah. you're saying that so that's where you, you get used if you, to the field. That's well, where you, you if get you, your yeah, end. If you can get jobs out there. Yeah. Uh, if you have a bachelor's, you can get a job out there. And it's a little more like just about signaling kind of. It's less about like, let me show you. Let me see that you can code. Whereas in the tech industry with tech companies, you know, if you're interviewing an Airbnb, it's going to be rigorous and it's stressful. And they're, you know, you're going to go through four different interviews. So they make you build stuff? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, oh, yeah, coding in front of them live. Yeah. And so like you got to be really good. And so I'm not going to get a job at a government contracting place. So I couldn't do the, the, the path that like my oh, peers yeah. were doing. Yeah, that's like right. Like some of them were doing out there at like, uh, I don't want to say their names because then people are going to be like, <laughs> ah, I work out there. I can code. You know what I mean? But I'm going to yes. be, the, and the reason yes. I say this is because I've tutored people. I was a tutor at EFSC for programming. Okay. I ran into a ton of people that cannot program yeah. and they work out there as yeah. programmers. And I was like, this is wild. How do y'all? And they're like, oh, dude, no one pays attention. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. This but is I, insane. Yeah, but I couldn't get a job there because of my past. So right. I had to like go at companies that are building software that is like really, like they're going to they're gonna make sure you know what you're doing when you come in the door. And so uh, did the EFS, EFSC thing, then did boot camp. And at the boot camp, sometimes they'll select people for, um, and they'll pay you to basically run the next cohort and help them and train them and teach them. And so I got hired as that, as a team lead to teach the next cohort. So I started teaching, that was the first break and it's nothing. They don't pay you anything. It was like 12 bucks, 13 bucks an hour. And so like, you know, I can't afford Aislinn's dance, right? Like oh God, dance, yes. Right, like I couldn't afford anything with it. I will never retire because my daughter does dance. Right, Just FYI. right? It, <laughs> So we can barely afford that. But then, the, so that wasn't the real break. I feel like that was pretty easy to get. And again, like it wasn't, it wasn't a rig, like an actual programming interview. The first real break was at a place called Bite Size Solutions, which uh, turned into Kena Healthcare. But um, I got it from a friend, actually. You know him, Jason Fowler. Okay. Um, Jason Fowler's wife vouched for me, and she's Amber, a software. Yeah. She, yeah, Amber. Yeah, Amber. Yeah, yeah, you know Amber. Amber's uh, she's a software engineer out there, super cool. And we became friends, and she was like, "Hey, I'm going to try to help you get an interview." 
And I was like, cool, okay. And she did. And she got me out there and I got the interview and passed the interview. How awesome is that? That's Super amazing. cool. So, okay, from there, you, you got your foot in the door. You finally got something started. How in the world does this come about? How does Underdog Devs come about? You know, oh. how, how, do you go, how do you go from there to that? How does that, well, how do you it, work that in? It kind of started, so I posted some things on like social media, usually Twitter. I don't really, I haven't used most other social media. <laughs> um, only recently did just to start communicating with people, but um, I posted something about it, about my past, saying, you know, for like inspiration, right? Like you could do anything you want to do type of thing. Probably use some cliches, like, you know, some trite expression about, you can be all you want to be, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, um, I surprisingly it like went wild. Like I had a lot of people reach out and say, because it's lucrative, software engineering is lucrative. It's a field everyone knows is lucrative and a lot of people are trying to get into. So they're like, wait, how did you do that? Right? Like if with your past, cause yeah. I mentioned my past um, and I had people reach out that had felonies. So I was like, yeah, I could help you. So I started this like group chat. And so I was basically helping them, guiding them, telling them what to do, what I would do. Um, and one in particular is a guy who was at back at when I first started, we first had the programming uh, put on the computers. He's actually here in Titusville, Ryan Dayton. Yeah. Uh, he went to astronaut though. So, okay. but, um, <laughs> so, so did Cindy. So did Cindy. With, uh, I went to astronaut with Ryan Dayton actually. Oh, did you? <laughs> wow. So Ryan and I became really close and, um, he basically every step of the way he did the exact same thing. In fact, according to him, I tossed the teaching. I, I dumped it into his lap. Uh, he did start teaching because I, I wanted to do my own thing. So I got started the class, got him teaching. And then I would like be over on the side programming my own stuff. <laughs> so then Ryan That's gets hilarious. out. Yeah, we go to a lot of places together. We end up out. He gets out and he does the same exact thing I did. Went to EFSC, follows in the foot, my footsteps, joins underdog devs. Uh, okay. and we get hired. He's a software engineer now. He's a, yeah, he builds mobile applications now was a construction, you know, into construction stuff and switch careers. And he's a perfect example. And he's right here in Titusville, which is really cool. That is really um, neat. Yeah. Well, local boy. Um, but yeah, so, uh, did I forget the question? What was it? <laughs> no, I was asking <laughs> you was how, question? how you got to the point where you, you founded this. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's right. No, so, you're, you're working your way there. You're, so, you're, exactly. you're, you're, yeah, right? you're on, you're on target. I knew where I was. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We promised right. you're on target. No, you're, so yeah, you're was doing like, good, yeah. yeah. Um, so we started like a, uh, like a group chat and with the, the people that wanted to learn. Um, I don't think Ryan was in that because Ryan and I were friends anyway, so I was always helping him. Um, but this group in particular was full of like people that had been to, you know, they went to prison for everything from armed robbery to whatever, you name it. And, uh, and I feel like they were like the type of people you want to help. They like made poor choices and nobody wants to be known for their worst choice, right? Yeah. Like regardless of what, how you, where you stand on criminal uh, 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 crime in our country or like rehabilitation, the point is, first off, it's in all of our benefit to yes. not have people repeat. Like yeah. we don't want right. high recidivism rate. We want yeah. low recidivism. If well, you come out and you have no hope and no opportunities, right? what's the likelihood you're not going back? Yeah. To and it doesn't benefit any of we us. We create more criminality with the way we have, with how broken our system yeah, is. How ostracized people yeah. are. You can't get, you can't rent places. You can't get a job at a lot of places. Yeah. And I get it, but like, I'm not saying that like having some sort of filter isn't important and you don't have the right to like, I don't, you know, not associate with whatever, but like the end goal is, I think that we all agree it's important and smart for all of us together yes. to try to get people to not recidivate, yes. recidivate or however you say that. Yes. Is that the right word? Recidivate? Not offend again. Don't yeah, not, ask, not offend again. <laughs> I can say, say don't that. Ask me, don't ask me a fancy word. <laughs> <laughs> the recidivism rate is like, I want to say 80 or 84% yeah. within three years go back. It's yeah. way up So there. like, it's really high. Yeah. Why is yeah. it so high? So, um, so anyway, so yeah, like, uh, like you, you don't want to be known for your, the worst thing you've ever done. None of us do. Yeah. Um, we all agree on that. And so like, this is a group of guys that like seemed like they were normal people who had made poor choices. And I started helping them. Well, then I realized like, I don't know anything. Like, I really don't. Like, I don't know much. I don't have a big network. I grew up as like, you know, <laughs> white trash kid from Coco, right? Like, I don't know anybody in the software engineering world. Not like real, you know, I, but I had built some contacts at the time. And so I was like, let me, let me ask them if they would help, if, see if they're interested. And so many people, which is kind of like, you know, a nod to humanity. Like there are some amazing people in the world. Tons of people said yes, lots of people. And you're talking about, some super successful people that have like their own Wikipedia page, like people that have like just done a lot in life and been great successes wanting to help a group that like 
I don't even know why they want to help us, but they do. And so they started helping. And, and then I was like, hey, okay, maybe we need to start like turn this into something a little more organized. And so we turned it into a 501c3 called Underdog Devs. And it's at 600 and like 70 people now, I think. That's um, amazing. Yeah, it's pretty huge from like just that little group chat of really cool people who, you know, needed help. Um, and of that group, like we have quite a few ones from here. Uh, Will McQuaid, he was cleaning pools when I found him. I say found him, like I didn't stumble across, you know, he wasn't lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I met him, his, so I, we actually know his wife. Uh, his wife introduced me to him and was like, hey, yeah, he wants to, he would like, some, you know, he's trying to do something. He wants to change what he's doing. He's cleaning pools, um, doesn't like it. It's hot, Florida, right? Yeah, like nobody yeah. needs it. You know, we all yeah. know why it sucks. Right? Yes. Like, yep. And uh, yeah, he's a software engineer now in San Francisco, making really good money. Um, he didn't amazing. even have a laptop when, when, when we, we like were introduced and I was like, come on, join under, underdog devs. He had, had felonies from the past. He had drug addiction problems Had beat them um, and joined. And yeah. So it's like lots of stories like that that were really cool. But yeah, so that's basically the idea of it. It blew up later, uh, mostly blew up for my partner. My partner, I have a friend that helped. Um, I met her, Jessica McKellar. She's like really well known in Silicon Valley. She sold multiple companies, was like the advisor to the CTO at Dropbox. Um, and you can look her up. She's just, an amazing and brilliant person done like really high achiever, you know, like MIT, you know, did all wow. the things. Yeah. She's a brilliant person. Well, she's got a passion for this. Lucky for me because she took underdog devs to like levels I could never have considered. And so that's really what happened is her vouching for me and for underdog devs kind of made it into something where we were able to get more people hired. We got resources, we got money, we got like computers. We, you know, I don't think on my own, I would have been able to do that. So you, you talk about the, you know, the resources of the company and things that the way you're helping people once they get out or if people that have had past felonies or whatever kind of background they have, how exactly does your organization do that? Because you were telling me yeah. about internships and all kinds of cool stuff. Well, even, or like underrepresented people, like yeah. for example, it's like 90% men. Yeah. So like a lot of companies want to hire women. They want to show that they're not like, right. Like we're not the sexist people you think we are. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, you know, if anyone wanted to change, you could join us and, and, so underrepresented people get, uh, and lower socioeconomic. Like I have a, a heart for that. Most of my family's poor. Most of my family's on welfare. Um, so for me, that means a lot. Like if you come from adversity or struggle or financial struggle or whatever, um, you know, it's, it's like a fight I also support. But yeah, you learn a level of determination coming from that life that nobody else knows. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And so what, what was the question? How, uh, what, in which ways does underdog devs help people that okay. are uh, socially economical challenged or uh, right. in other, other challenges? Right. So the first step is we, we they go to the website, they sign up, come in as a mentee, and we have lots of mentors. So we assign you a mentor, and usually we recommend meeting like every other week. So what that is, it's very loose. The agenda for that is loose. And what I mean by that is the mentor decides like, with the mentee, what they need to like, to help them get in the industry. That's like the basic level. That's the easiest level. Well, then we have a program within the program called Project Underdog. This became kind of like the heart and soul of like underdog devs. What it is, we pay their bills for three to four months. It's actually been every four months. Every, I say three to four, because we started with three and we're like, if you need four, and everyone's like, we want four. Of course we need, Right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's become four every single time. So I should just say four. Four months, we pay their bills. Okay. Um, on average, about $2,000 a piece. It's not a ton. You're not going to be you're yeah. not going on cruises <laughs> yeah. with this money, right? Yeah. But you will get by. And the point of that is this. Like economic mobility, right, in our country is a little more stagnant than you recognize. Yeah. If you see, if you're born into lower socioeconomic group, yeah. say you make 30, your parents make 30000 they're uneducated. You have a high probability of when you die being in similar circumstances. Like, yeah. It's not a lot of mobility. I know it feels like that. Like, oh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. For whatever reason, the way our country is, you have, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's highly predictable where you'll end up. And yeah. so, you know, when you have things like programming, which is a lucrative skill that doesn't require a college degree, it can free people from that. It's like, yeah. I don't know of a better skill that leverages, uh, uh, like, or that allows someone to the economic mobility as programming, I, I mean, maybe back in the gold rush, right? You find a bunch of gold <laughs> right. or a lottery ticket. Right. Aside from that, like I don't know anything else. Um, yeah. the, 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 just get the skill and 
boom, your life has changed and your family's life has changed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a big deal. It's, it's like, you know, you, but the problem with that is that like, if I could take a year off to learn to code, where do I probably come from? Where, money. Yeah. money. Money. Exactly. What I, like, who am I? I probably have parents that take care of me. I probably yeah. was given lots of stuff. I probably have, you know. You have somebody to co-sign a loan for you. You've got, right. you've got so something. You probably don't come from lower socioeconomic yeah. backgrounds. So we try to help like working class type people. People that are working class that are like struggling and getting by or barely getting by. And, and we pay their bills so they can take a year off or maybe not a year, four months. <laughs> I say a year because we actually end up, we allow them two terms. So two, so it ends up being eight, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. So we're paying yeah. your bills for eight months. Yeah. And uh, during that time, we add mentors to your, to your uh, load. You basically get five mentors. Now, these mentors are from like Google, Adobe, wherever, <laughs> brilliant software engineers. And you meet with them five times a week and they code with you for an hour. And they basically give you one-on-one -on -one guidance. Like this, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hours. This is unheard of. They, these companies are paying <laughs> these people. I mean, the average salary, like everyone I know makes around 140, 150 easy. <laughs> Easy. Total packages around 210, 230. Total package, meaning like you get, usually you get a, uh, a bonus. Usually you get comp, you get equity for the first four years. Um, so you're, now these people are donating their time. So imagine like basically you're talking to every one of our mentors, it's probably 200,000 a year that's amazing. given an hour every week. Wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild. And so you have five mentors that are leading you. Like Ryan Dayton, for example, still on his job, he builds Android uh, mobile apps. I hope Ryan don't get in trouble for me saying that. <laughs> he, he relies on mentors sometimes when he gets stuck. He, can have, he hits up these like brilliant people he still has because they helped him get hired. And oh, so, amazing. you yeah. know, and, and I mean, I, it's, so where he works at, which actually was where I was working, I got, uh, he interviewed where I was working at the time um, and got hired. Not surprising. Had a few people advocating for him on the inside. <laughs> um, he knew a guy. <laughs> right. He knew a guy. So we got him hired there and, uh, but he still gets help from them. Like it's invaluable. This group, this network of people that you have, like he gets stuck on a problem. He can hit up these brilliant people. I and, have never heard of a program like this. This is, I am blown away. <laughs> this is <laughs> amazing. Yeah. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. It's, it's definitely like unique. Um, it's unique in the sense that like, you're not going to, if it, this is the really unique thing is that if it were paid, like the boot camp I went to, you're getting guidance from someone like me. I just learned the cohort before you <laughs> yeah. because they can't afford those kinds of mentors. Yeah. Not if it's for profit, not if it's yeah. paid. So the, the, this is the, like one of those weird, unique situations where it has to be free and it's actually better. Usually when it's free, it's not better. Like this is one <laughs> of the rare occasions where free allows it to be better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't take a salary. Jessica doesn't need money. She, you know, she doesn't want for money at all. And in fact, she, you know, funds like half of that. That's probably. amazing. Um, so wow. yeah, like, yeah, it ends up being pretty cool and an opportunity. Like when people get in project underdog, like you kind of got it, your path paved for you to like, to a nice career. That's the, one of the most incredible things I think I've heard in a long time. Yeah. I knew, I knew you guys were doing a lot of stuff through that, but I had no idea it was that in depth. Oh yeah. The yeah, number yeah. of lives that are being changed by this, because something like this has a ripple effect. It's not just the life of the person you're changing. It's the life of everyone and the, and their periphery, oh, their yes. kids, their spouses, yes. families, the, the crimes that they won't commit because now they have an opportunity yeah. to change their life and, yep. and, and live up to what they always could have been. Like this is, this is the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. Well, it's interesting. Cause even like some of the calls will make you just cry. Yeah. Me and Amanda put Ryan, in fact, Ryan was one. We put Ryan on speakerphone. So like we could hear him. We're like, I already knew he was hired, right? Like yeah. Yeah. I gave him like Johnny Cochran style. Like <laughs> you should have heard. what you said. Yeah. No, I'm saying like when they were discussing whether or not we should hire him. Yeah. I was like, I was on point that day. I was <laughs> like, this is why you got to do this. This is why, this is why he's better than this other guy who he, I will just say, Ryan doesn't interview well. He's super <laughs> smart. But he interviews, yeah, he's like a construction gruff. Yes. <laughs> grunts at people, that right? Sounds about right. Grunts at the interview. Like he was not getting hired without some sort of, someone convincing them, you know. But he's super smart. So like, we just had to get him there on the job once he realized. But anyways, yeah, you'll get calls and it's like, you know, these people, some of them have never had benefits before in their life. And like, they call oh, yeah. and wow. they're crying and they're like, 
dude, you know, this changed our life. Like we had one friend, um, he was a first gen immigrant in, in California. His whole family lives in his house. He was working construction. Like for him, it changed the entire group of fam, like a group of people's lives yeah. and trajectory. So like, you know, he, he told me, this is what he told, uh, actually told me and Amanda again, um, cause Amanda liked hearing these stories, like when they would call and we'd put them on speakerphone and he was telling us, he's like, yeah, I haven't even told my family yet. Oh. We're like, oh, so sweet. Like me and Amanda are crying. We're like bawling. It was cool. Oh man. This is, this is, uh, yeah, this is one of the, the cooler stories I think uh, anybody will ever hear. It's uh, man, it's amazing. If people want to find out more about your organization, where can, where can they go to find it? Yeah, we're on like most social media. So at Twitter, at Underdog Devs. On our website is underdogdevs.org. Um, all the other sites too. I don't really run those, so I don't, I'm not even sure how <laughs> active they are. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely, the website's the best place, especially if you want to sign up. Because okay. as a mentor, if you have skills in software engineering and can code, um, as a mentee, if you're underrepresented from lower socioeconomic background or formerly incarcerated or have a felony, sign up as a mentee there. Okay. Rick, thank you so much for being on here. We really, yeah. really appreciate you coming on and chatting with us, buddy. Yeah, thank you, man. Wish you nothing but the best. Love you, Bubba. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, on until uh, next week, I reckon, right? Yes, I suppose. Yeah. Anything crazy <laughs> happening over the weekend? God, I hope not. Anything, anything crazy <laughs> happening over the weekend? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm gonna say, I you don't have any big events, Frank? You're uh, not going? You're it's not our cutting last. Cutting the ribbon somewhere. <laughs> no, our last, uh, our last football game is this weekend. We, had, we played Park Avenue uh, Tuesday. So oh, that was how'd a, you do? It was, I think they're probably, you know, hopefully nobody from Park Avenue is listening to this, but I think they're probably the best team in the league. So I think we did pretty good finishing 38 to 28. You know, we, we didn't, we didn't win, but it was pretty close. Okay. The kids, the kids were happy. It was a now, good game. What's the team record? This um, season? this, this year we have, uh, we've won one and lost four. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's, Tough it's, season it's on the no, it's here. funny, man, these kids over there, this school, like this school we just played. They were not kids that big when we were in middle school. I mean, there's like there's this there was there were kids on that team that were I kid you not six two two sixty. Well, you know, I mean, this come is on middle now. school, man. Jermaine Chester. This is middle school. Oh, middle school. I'm like, okay, what okay. in the world, man? I was gonna man? say Mike Lowry, Jermaine Chester. Well, yes, they were, but those, boys. yeah, those were when they got that big. They were at least sophomores. That is true. At least yeah, sophomores. Yeah. That is true. These guys were. I mean, they're just you're humong- humongous in seventh and eighth grade. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Oh, like man, I was I could never dream about being that size. It's fluoride in <laughs> yeah. the water. It's all the hormones in our food. Yeah, whatever it is. Like goodness it's gracious, the fluoride. man. Fluoride. Uh, yeah, and they're they're all like super fast. They're all uh, like super agile. Uh, they can everybody can catch, everybody can throw, everybody can run. So I mean, it's and then we have. So what a, do they have, need have, a coach for? We, well, no, that's that's the other team. That's the other team. That's the other team. Yeah, our team needs a coach. The other team didn't have a coach actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were just yeah. out there. They didn't even need one. Yeah, they were they were writing their plays in the sand and just going with it. Yeah. Oh man, no, it's a, it's a bunch of great kids on our side though, and it's it's uh, nice to have. It's a bunch of Christian schools, so it's it's pretty neat stuff. But anyhow, I digress. I had to say it at least once. Uh, we I haven't digressed. I haven't digressed today at all. No, I see it. that. That's yeah, right. I haven't digressed today at all. That's the That's first true. time digressing. You did good. I even made it through ladybugs and didn't say it. Right. Anyhow, uh, yeah. Thank you again for being here. Uh, thank you again to Edna Wilson for the sponsorship. And um, yeah, guys, go to ears.com, e e a r s s dot com or dot org to find out more about us and our organization, or search ears to find the podcast. Ears. All right. We'll catch y'all next week. Bye bye.